So I had somebody send me a question uh, a couple days ago that got me thinking. Uh, it, just great question, one that we all deal with, but I realized it was not a short, easy answer. Uh, they have been listening to my podcast interview uh, that I did where I was talking about how uh, the people who went to the Christian event nights behaved any way but what a Christian should with um, being rude, mean-spirited, uh, bringing in drugs and alcohol and messing around in the bushes and on the rides and, uh, and just all the discipline problems and stuff that we had. And, you know, how do I deal with that uh, when we constantly see things that people who claim to be believers are doing that are the opposite of what a believer should be? And and on this podcast, I kind of ranted and spouted a little bit, vented a bit, because it's something I really struggle with. Uh, now, if you've missed my testimony, I was not raised in the church. I was raised outside. And one of the things I have always struggled with, and I know a lot of people struggle with, is it tends to get labeled under the hypocrisy. Uh, because they look at what most people know what they think a Christian should be like. And then they see these people who go to church or claim to be a Christian, and they're doing the exact opposite. And they're mean, they're rude, they're hateful, um, and they're just not what you think somebody should be like. After all, we do know that Jesus told us that we are supposed to be loving, forgiving. Uh, we're supposed to be nice. The golden rule, treat other people the way that you want to be treated. Not the way you think they deserve, not the way you think they want to be treated, because people will use that to justify mean, cruel behavior, but treat them the way you want to be treated. We see people who call themselves Christians use the story of Jesus overturning the tables in the temple as an excuse for them to be mean and cruel to other people. Uh, so what's interesting is when you look at Jesus, the only time Jesus is uh, rude, mean, uh, judgmental, it's towards religious authorities who are not living what they preach. Um, and that's who he gets on to. So when he's overturning the tables in the temple, he is attacking people who are doing evil in God's name and, in, and, re and is a representative of him in the temple. Uh, that's what he's going against. What's also notable about that is he is doing it in his office and authority as Messiah as the Son of God come to deliver mankind. He's got an authority that we don't. We are commanded to love, to bless, to serve, to forgive, to show grace. Uh, if you look at Galatians 5, and 23, uh, for we know that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. That is what a believer should be living like. And then we look and we see believers that are, and I use the term in quotes, we see them living in a way that is the opposite of that. And as somebody who's come from outside the church and become a follower of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, it's frustrating because you look at that and they're the ones that, okay, if I had seen that when I was not a believer, I wouldn't have become one. And they set a terrible example because they don't, no, care that they are Jesus to a lost and dying world. And when they see that kind of hate and mean spiritedness and uh, selfishness, self-righteousness, pride, when they see that, that's who they assume Jesus is. And, oh, it, when I was working at the theme parks, um, Anytime we had those events, I was apologizing to my coworkers. We're not all like that. That's not how we're supposed to behave. This is not what we're like or what we're supposed to be like. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are like that. Um, and the and what I call the church, uh, especially here in America, we are really struggling with some major issues along those lines. Uh, COVID really brought out the worst in us. Because we had a lot of people that turned COVID into a political and fighting situation instead of an opportunity to serve and love. 
and I think I've done a, a video where I talked about this, that if we were living according to how Jesus wants us to live, it would be, how can I love you? When I was pastoring, you, it was a no-win situation. Uh, we closed the church. We had people mad that we dared to close the church. Sorry, the authority said to you, obey the authority placed over you. We had people that were mad that we closed it. When we reopened the church, we had people that were mad that we reopened it. We required masks and distancing at the time. We had people that were mad that we required masks. We had people that were mad we required distance. We had other people that were mad that we had some that refused to wear masks. Um, and then we you know, kind of opened up and how dare you allow people to do something other than what I demand they do. You couldn't win. And the whole time I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going, people, we're supposed to be loving each other. If you see somebody in a mask, uh, on the strip we were just on, I had somebody sitting by me on one of the planes I had a mask on. I turned around, hey, would you like me to put a mask on for you? Let me serve you. Um, and instead we're demanding everybody serves us. You know, the whole thing is it wasn't about our freedoms. It wasn't about some great government conspiracy. It's about how are you going to serve and love the people around you? And demanding that they do what you want isn't it. Uh, we will never win people over through laws, through ridicule, through uh, pointing fingers and making people obey. You don't win. You don't change their hearts that way. You just stir up anger. So when you see that, when I see that, it, it gets frustrating. And the natural inclination in me is to want to reach out and smack him and go, are you stupid? And, and I know that's, and I, I'm exaggerating a little bit, a little bit, uh, but that really is my initial inclination is I want to reach out and go, don't you know who you represent? Do you not care? It's not about liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, my right, you're wrong. It's not about that. It's about love and service. And yeah, it drives me nuts. It makes me mad. It gets me irritated and frustrated. So much so that, I mean, I just want to reach out and grab them and say, why don't you do what I do? Why don't you live it the way I live it? Why don't you? <laughs> and then I go, oh, hey, whoops, I'm doing the same thing. And this is really kind of where I think it comes down to it. Um, why do, yes, it aggravates and irritates me. But how do I not let it make me bitter? How do I not get permanently upset? How do I not write them off? Because I know what I was when I became a follower. I know what Jesus forgave me of. I know what he continues to forgive me of. It's something I struggle with a lot. I struggle with the pride and being always right. Uh, I, I know it's a struggle constantly. And so when I see others doing that, I realize it's a reflection of me as well. And it's a reminder to me when I get mad at people living an ungodly life while claiming to be godly. And I realize it's me that I'm looking at a mirror. And I then have to say, Lord, forgive me for being angry with them. Forgive me for myself, my own self-righteous attitude. Forgive me, Lord, while I'm yelling at them to serve. I also need to serve them. I need to humble myself and pray and turn from my own wicked ways. It's easy for us to want to impose ourselves upon others. But ultimately, it comes down to, are we willing to let them impose on us? Uh I had, uh, I was on this tour this last couple of weeks with several of our state officials and our uh, superintendent was speaking at all these meetings. So I heard this message over and over about, are you a fountain or a drain? Great message, by the way. I may share that at some point. But he made one statement several times that really kind of hit me a little bit. He says, so you think that you're a servant? Well, what happens when somebody treats you like the servant that you think you are? What comes out? And it, it just really kind of hit me. Okay, if we're 
considering ourselves servants, are we willing to be treated like servants get treated? Are we willing to let people step on us and stomp on us? And if we're not, then do we really have a servant's heart? Um, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting conundrum. How do I keep it from getting to me? And, and there are definitely times my family will tell you, I will see stuff and I will rant. I have a hard time when I see it on social media, not just jumping in and going, hey, what's wrong with you? Don't you get it? <laughs> and I have to stop and realize I'm just pounding myself in the face because I'm just as guilty. I'm just as guilty. Ultimately, what it comes down to is I have to ask God for my own forgiveness and remember the state I'm delivered from. And remember that we're still battling uh, flesh and blood. All of us are. We all still have that sin nature that we're all struggling with. And it comes out in different ways from different people. And I can't ask other people to do what I'm not willing to do. So Lord, help me to hear what I'm doing wrong. Help me to see my own bad attitudes. God, forgive me and let me be the model instead of the judge. Let me be the servant instead of the master. Because you're the master. And the master is the one who calls the shots and does the correcting and fixes things and tells people what to do. So I have to surrender that to the master and realize it's not my job. My job is to serve. My job is to love. My job is to forgive. That's what he's called us to do. And it is through that that lives will be changed. That's how I keep from getting better. <laughs> so I hope uh, hope this answers that question. And I hope that it's blessed you. And I hope it'll help you remember we're servants first. Not masters. Somebody else is the master. Will you let them be the master? And will you serve? Will you love? Will you help steer the church in America back on track to where it should be? Not through telling others how to behave and believe and, you know, all of that. But instead living it ourselves and loving them regardless of who they are. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless you. We thank you.